Yo, what's going on Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another episode of the Strategy Series. In today's episode, we're going to go over how to counter Height of Mastery Victory Strike. Now you see the Broly Leader on the left. A lot of times you'll be seeing the Height of Mastery Victory Strike package played in either the Broly Leader or the Universe 7 Frieza Leader. Sometimes in the Universe 7 Frieza Leader, they're going to be playing the old Ramp Objection build where you're playing the 5-drop Tournament Power Goku into the Victory Strike or they're going to be playing the Universe 7 package into Path of Greatness into Height of Mastery. Broly usually always going to be playing Height of Mastery into Victory Strike, sometimes with the Shen Roshi package, sometimes Times with a thicker swap line and playing Gein to mill their deck so they can, they can get Sparking 7. So we're going to go over some cards and strategies on how to counter that deck. It's really important going into ARG Invitational 2019 because I do, I do feel like that's probably the scariest deck of the tournament. So we'll get right into it. Minus Kelly Zone at the number one slot. We've got that to counter Cold Bloodlust. Uh, we got that to counter Crusher Ball, we got that to counter Mutaito, which are a lot of the cards that Broly, Hide of Mastery, and U7 Hide of Mastery in general are playing because they are yellow strategies and one is a Frieza Army Leader. So Killy Zone is really important if you have a strategy you need to go off unhinged. Dende, new to the job, is a card that is really good against the ramp build, the objection build. If you can basically sick them on four energy, they need five energy to complete their play if they're playing the objection build. So Dende can stop them right in their tracks. Time Control Kanoa. Pretty good against the yellow Broly variant. If they are playing Shigesh, they're trying to Shigesh out the Path of Greatness. It's a really good defensive tool for them, and they just get to cheat out Path of Greatness and keep energy up for defense. So if you can Kronoa them, render two to four of their super combos useless. Really, really strong. Wish to Perunga, this is a more under the radar card. Not like one of the best cards by any means, but it is pretty interesting because we do know from just like playing the game that Chain Zeno really can deal with this type of deck the height of mastery deck permanent this card gains desire in all areas activate main if you later card is a black shenron card choose one of your and your opponent's battle cards with energy cost ignoring barrier if they're equal choose all other battle cards you control all the battle cards your opponent controls ignoring barrier and you're in your opponent's hands shuffle them into the owner's decks and then you draw and you're and your opponent both draw five cards so that was a bit of a mouthful but basically what it does is you and your opponent both keep a card of the same energy cost ignoring barrier and you shovel your entire rest of your both both your boards back into the deck and your hands and you redraw five cards so it's almost like getting chain zenoed uh now you might be thinking this is a little bit weird because your opponent's usually only going to have Path of Greatness on the board. Well, that's not going to be the case if they have Roshi Shen. You can kind of leave the Roshi or the Shen on the board and use this. The other thing is, though, that even if they do keep Path of Greatness, you mess with their hands. So they only redraw to five cards. So if they had eight, nine, ten, eleven cards, they basically neg six ish. And then uh, they lose, they mess up their Hide of Mastery Victory Shike combo. So it's pretty unlikely they'll Victory Shike you the following turn. Just something to consider. Then we have Force Ejection Mass Saiyan, really good against the ramp builds again. Deadly Defender Son Goku, representing all Deadly Defenders, is something that Peter Katani pointed out that he had a lot of success with Deadly Defenders trying to protect his life total because even though Height of Mastery can come in and tap down barrier blockers, which barrier blockers used to be a good answer to Victory Strike, uh, the thing with Deadly Defenders is they have to be attacked before your leader can attack. So if you can defend the Deadly Defenders through the height swings, you're going to be in a decent position, which is really cool. Next up, we got Group Leader Peel Off. This is more just for the Height of Mastery, not so much for Victory Strike because you can't negate any skills on Victory Strike, but Group Leader Peel Off can negate the dual attack on Height of Mastery, so that can be relevant in certain instances. Dimension Magic, this is kind of representing all sparking negates. So even though Victory Strike cannot be negated itself, you still can activate counter attacks. So you can still activate Dimension Magic, and even though Dimension Magic won't negate the attack, you'll still be able to untap two energy, which if you haven't been TN'd, uh, is really helpful for you know comboing extra 10Ks, maybe Unbreakables, maybe Infernal Villain cells the other really important thing to note is you can activate the sparking anyway like you're still able to activate the card you can pay the cost however you want you can pay that with the one blue or you can pay with sparking five and that can be really really relevant just to get an extra card to see to play with you know untapping two energy and drawing a card off your life when you're gonna get victory strike anyway is really really high value and like let's just say that taking that fifth life Put you to four life and then your super combos are alive so really nifty instances like that just because victory strike can't be negated doesn't mean you cannot activate counter plays so keep that in mind mafuba though is one of the only counter plays in the game that actually stops victory strike in its tracks when it attacks because this card goes on top of it and gets around basically the unnegatable part of it Objection, playing objection yourself. If you have some type of strategy that really can get over the top of victory strike, maybe a turn three win condition, maybe a turn four win condition that needs five or more energy playing objection and playing ramp can get you there a little faster so that's a little helpful then we have ultimate judgment jocko sometimes you're playing a deck you're playing a strategy that just can't out combo the victory strike but if you were able to out combo it you'd be able to win on the following turn that's where ultimate judgment jocko comes in you bring this guy in and he is basically a 15k combo bouncing back your opponent's 10k combo back to their hand ideally it'll be a 10k that costs one energy so they can't just use it for defense but if need be it'll be a super combo or something along those lines and then your opponents lose out on 
around 15k combo power and hopefully you'll be able to out combo the victory strike then we have the heroes mafuba so obviously very similar to mafuba works in pretty much the same way it goes on top of the card so it will get over the victory strike Prem to strike i got a shout out pat o'neill on this one he kind of made this aware to me i mean it's a really good card but i didn't realize the application it could have in the victory strike matchup so basically if you're playing any type of green deck that's charging almost all greens you leave two open at all times to preemptive strike the uh path to greatness right if you preemptive strike path to, path to greatness uh, basically they lose out on their entire play without path to greatness they can't go into height of mastery so any ways to deal with path to greatness is really going to hinder the strategy preemptive strike is one of the best ways to do that one of my favorite cards for dealing with victory strike slash hydro mastery is final showdown son goku so this hasn't been super meta relevant really ever yet at least i do think this is a very powerful engine that can definitely do some things so basically what happens is when the appropriate Kr krillin is ko'd which there are some in clash of fates and we actually got some new ones in the anniversary box you can play this final showdown son goku for free from your hand and then you can basically ko anything on the board ignoring energy costs ignoring barrier and uh basically that lets you deal with height of mastery and victory strike if they're trying to basically break through your krillin deadly defender so really really good really really powerful that you can basically do that with this engine the only issue is there are answers to barrier blockers in yellow or basically deadly defenders in yellow basically they have the uh vegeta from clash of fates itself that is a vegeta br that comes in pops a rest mode barrier and if you have any of the blockers on board they can just rest those ahead of mastery so again it's not the most consistent engine but at the same time people are not really playing that vegeta right now so this could be the perfect engine to come in and sneak some wins on height of mastery victory strike you can catch them off guard i don't think they're siding the appropriate things so you can uh, definitely take mind of that then we have the green broly deck in general being represented here that is basically one of the quote-unquote hard counters to the height of mastery victory strike deck Basically, they can never resolve the Hydra Master Victory Strike because your Brolies are just, just literally going to pop them. So uh, you got to make sure you're being careful with playing this deck, though, because if they do remove your Brolies or if they do bait out your Brolies, they're going to basically be able to Victory Strike you no problem. So make sure you're taking advantage and being aware of that. Next up, a lot of really, really good red cards to help answer Victory Strike Hydra Mastery, uh, one of which being After Image Technique. Now, again, we know Victory Strike's attack cannot be negated, but you can still activate Counterplay in response to Hydra Mastery Victory Strike's attacks. And After Image is super good because it actually has a relevant effect that almost basically stops the attack. So it'll decrease Victory Strike by 10,000, making it a 35k, and it'll raise your leader by 40,000, making your ideally awakened leader a 55k or a 50k if you're unawakened. So there's there's already a 20k deficit your opponent has to reach just to deal damage and as long as you have a decent sized hand you can hopefully out combo the victory strike then we have is that all you got again you won't be negating the attack but you can discard a card to make the victory strike lose uh 15 000, which is really relevant if a dead 10k in your hand a dead extra card in your hand this card is really really good at just dropping the power of the victory strike um just so you can deal with it a little bit more easily then we have Revenge Death Ball, a card that only baby leaders can use, only two leaders in the game can use it. However, it's one of the biggest counters to Victory Strike, in my opinion. You know, this card, if you're able to resolve two Revenge Death Balls on a Height of Mastery or Victory Strike, there's no, there's absolutely no way they're killing you with that Victory Strike, right? Even one, just boosting your leader by 10k and decreasing the Victory Strike by 15k is already such a huge deficit, very similar to After Image Technique. That means you're just probably going to out combo the Victory Strike, which is really, really good. Uh, another thing to note is that Vegeta Baby, a lot of times you're going to want to hold your Awaken until they they drop height of mastery to tap you out and this way you can awaken when they attack and use revenge death ball because revenge death ball is not affected by battering laser which is a card a lot of people are afraid of so definitely something to keep in mind then we have glory obsessed prince vegeta this basically represents anything that can attack active modes because being able to attack active modes lets you deal with path to greatness like i mentioned before one of the most important key pieces to dealing with that deck so you want to keep that in mind anyway you can attack active modes there are overwhelms that do it there are a lot of cards in red that do it some cards in black that do it uh so you want to be mindful of that crusher ball it's going to go hand in hand with Mutaito. Uh, Victory Strike cannot be negated, but it can be Crusher Balled as long as your opponent doesn't have access to Battering Laser. And as long as your opponent does not activate Minus Killy Zone on you for the duration of the turn, you can Crusher Ball and Mutaito the Victory Strike. Mutaito, fun fact, actually does get around Deflect because its ability to rest things is an auto. And Deflect doesn't actually prevent you from playing counterplays. It just says the card that is being played is unaffected by counterplay. So when Mutaito comes in, his ability is an auto that rests high to mastery. So it gets around Deflect. In case you guys were wondering how or why that works then we have merciless farewell 
I swear to you guys, if Bojack could untap one energy on Awaken, he would be the hard counter Titan Master Victory Strike, and I don't. It'd be so amazing. It'd be so so cool. Uh, this is the activate battle specifically for Bojack that says discard two cards and choose one of your opponent's battle cards in rest mode and KO it. So every single time Victory Strike attacks, it's gonna be in rest mode. This card literally just answers it for one energy and two cards out of your hand, which is so much more than worth it to deal with victory strike right the only main issue is height of mastery comes in and taps you out so this is only going to be live if you went first and are on four energy and are able to basically skip turn without making a play so as long as you can always keep one yellow open you build a merciless farewell the main issue is with this that you're not gonna be able to really consistently resolve this if you're going second against the deck so that's kind of a big problem like i said i swear if bojack could untap one energy he would be the hard counter to victory strike that would be so sick time magic stops high mastery from restanding which is really nice and then the final combo we have guys is for the yellow dende players out there you've got your Clanitar and mecha frieza you can look at your opponent's hand and choose to play the victory strike down uh, onto the board and then you can you know, if you have a, either a way to pay energy for it or a way to free wish it out, you can play Mecha Frieza, the Returning Terror, play it, discard a card, pop the Victory Strike that is now in rest mode. So a nifty little combo, you can basically ensure that that will go off by using Minus Killy Zone, because if you do that, they're not going to be able to Cold Blood Lust you, and you can basically do that play without any problem. So a uh, really, really good combo there. So guys, hopefully this video was helpful right before the ARG Invitational, getting you guys some information on how to deal with Victory Strike. Let me know in the comments below if this was helpful. Let me know in the comments below if you have any better ideas on how to deal with it. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Joey. This is Crossbow TCG, and I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, now that you guys finished watching that video, they should have never banned fucking Child's Wish. They shouldn't. Super Shadow was the best deck in the game. Super Shadow was the best.